Stop being a doormat for the narcissist. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. So there are a couple of verses that some narcissists know and they know them not because they're so interested in God's word, but because they will use the few verses that they do know to hook a Christian, right, into forgiving them over and over again and taking their abuse. And that's why I titled this Stop Being the Doormat for the Narcissist. And what is a doormat? Well, a doormat is stationary. It stays in a place where people will enter either a building or a home, right? Apartment. And basically, you wipe your feet on it, you take the mud off of your boots, you slide them all around, and you stomp your feet, and all that dirt and crud gets right into the doormat. And that doormat is used over and over again, repeatedly taking all the dirt all the filth and all of the stomping and a doormat gets used a lot hence the metaphor of he or she being a doormat for somebody and i'm going to share with you the narcissist's favorite bible verse that he or she predominantly will use on a christian person whether it's you know, your, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, a friend, or as I call the frenemy, or a partner or a spouse, they will use this verse repeatedly to hook you to stay in that relationship and take their abuse. Now, if you know what verse I'm going to share with you, go ahead and quickly jot it down in the comments down below. So here we go. And it's in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 and 22. And it says, Then Peter came to Jesus Christ and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven times. So in other words, there really isn't a limit on how many times to forgive someone. So the narcissist will use this verse to keep you hooked, keep you taking the abuse, and keeping you in that situationship, as I call it. I'm going to read you a few more verses, and then I'm going to actually give you enlightenment about forgiveness and how the, the narcissist is using that verse deceitfully and also incorrectly. And it's in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. It says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake forgave you. So here God again is encouraging us to be forgiving, to forgive one another. And another verse in Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, and it says, Bearing with each other and forgiving each other. If anyone should have a complaint against another, even as also the Lord has forgiven you, so also do you. Now, here is the enlightenment. So nowhere in the Bible and nowhere in these scripture references that I just gave you does it say that the, the offender must have remorse, must say they're sorry. And we know that narcissists do the fake apology, right? That it's just fake. It's a blanket fake apology. But the person doesn't need to show remorse, doesn't need to be present. It's something that you do within yourself. And you're just forgiving that person, right? However, nowhere, nowhere in the Bible does it say, and stick around for the abuse, stick around for more abuse to be used like a doormat. See, that's a misunderstanding that comes with these Bible verses for a lot of Christians where they think, well, you know, I'm just going to have to keep forgiving that narcissist. You know, he or she is really abusive. They're destroying my life, but I have to keep forgiving them 
first of all, God gave each one of us choice, freedom of will. So to say have to, it's up to you if you want to, if you want to obey the commands in God's word. So he never forces you to do this. But what I want you to understand is that nowhere does it say if someone is doing evil to you and offending you and destroying you to stick around and keep having to do the forgiveness thing, right? Because that's all the narcissist does. The narcissist is a cycle of abuse. He or she, that's, that's their whole primary goal is to abuse their victims to the end of destroying them. You must understand that. So when they use that Bible verse, you turn around and you say, nowhere in God's word does it say that after I forgive you, I need to stick around for that. You don't. In fact, it's the opposite. And I'm going to share those Bible verses with you. But first, we're going to do a little checklist here so that you understand that that narcissist that you're either with or were with, that person is so evil and so driven with demonic influences and there can be no good that comes for it. So we're gonna read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses two through five, and it says, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossipers, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. Avoid such people. That's right. God's word tells you, the Christian, to avoid these people. He tells everyone, avoid these people. But I want you to understand that if you have a narcissist in your life that is using scripture against you to keep you hooked, keep you as their doormat, to take their abuse, their stomping on you, their wiping their dirt and filth all over you, right? I want you to understand that God's word tells you to avoid these people. Have you, did you do your check? Your check on uh, the number of th different things? How about, um, let's say, brutal, right? Is your narcissist brutal? I'm going to say yes. Arrogant, double yes boastful and conceited triple check you so go over that list again and you'll see that the narcissist is everywhere in that and the final three powerful words is avoid such people now we're going to go into a couple of more verses that where god is telling you hey these evil toxic people I don't, I want you protected. I want you guarded. I don't want you around them. And on top of being protected, want God wanting you protected, there's another reason why God tells you not to be around these toxic, evil narcissists. And it's because it's eventually going to affect you. That's right. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, it says, be not deceived evil communications or associations, contact, corrupt, good manners or character or morals. It eventually corrodes all that goodness in you because you get defeated. You start walking with bitterness in your own heart and you start having resentment and, and maybe even some hate and it eventually corrodes your good morals and God wants that protected too. And I want to say this too, when you're dealing with someone who is demonically driven, who's listening to those devilish voices in their air, it's like an earpiece, right? Uh, incoming, oh, incoming, do harm. Oh, okay. Do evil. Oh, okay. Attack that person. It's incoming 
continuously. You must understand this. We're talking, this is not a physical battle between you and that narcissist. It is, it is more than that. It is a spiritual battle. Look, it, narcissism is not a mental health issue. No, it's not. Because mental health issues affect that person, the person experiencing the mental health issues. If they're depressed, they're sad and withdrawn. If they have eating disorders, it's because of some type of anxiety within that person. It affects that person. When you have something that, that these toxic people are doing to hurt someone else other than themselves, that's spiritual. That's right. And I'm going to read it straight from God's word. You are dealing with something on a spiritual level. And I want you to understand that from God's mighty word that enlightens the eyes of our understanding. So in Ephesians 6, 12, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That is what you're dealing with. That's why it's just so tough. It, it is like you just scratch your head and say, what am I dealing with? Well, that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with someone who is being demonically influenced and you cannot handle and deal with somebody who's that, that has a spiritual issue, if you will, with just handling it like it's a mental disorder. It will fail every single time time. And now I'm going to share with you more reasons why you should not be with that narcissist. No, you have the light of God and Christ in you. And if any of you are out there that are thinking, you know, I would love to be born again and have Christ in me. And you're wondering, how can I do that? Go to Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. And it says, if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And now, proof that you should not be with that narcissist who is using you like a doormat. And in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, it says, And have no fellowship, that's zero fellowship, with the unfruitful works of darkness. The narcissist is involved with darkness. They are dark, evil people seeking to do you harm in a, an abusive and repetitive cycle. And it says, but rather reprove them. It's a shame to even speak of the things that they do in secret. That's the next verse here. Uh, and God's word is so clear. It is so, it, it, God shoots from the hip, so to speak. He doesn't mince his words. He tells you right out what is really going on in behind the scenes, on the back end right? With these narcissists. Then the other section of scriptures in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 through 18. Do not be unequally yoked, partnered, or teamed up with unbelievers. Again, the narcissist is an unbeliever. They are engaged in darkness and in evil. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness and wickedness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial, which is another word for demon? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Nothing. And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among the unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. These verses speak volumes and they're very, very clear to us that 
we can forgive the narcissist, but we are not to stick around them. We are not to take their abuse. We're not to be a doormat. No, you have God and Christ in you. You are holy. You are unblameable, unreprovable in God's sight. And he calls you precious in his sight. That's right. You have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and he's your big brother. You have God Almighty as your heavenly father. You are so important to God. And I want you to walk with that mighty power that's within you, claiming your rights, privileges, and your abilities and manifesting all of that power. God's word also says, greater is he, that Holy Spirit in you, that's in you than the devil spirits that are in the world. The devil spirits don't want you to know that. that that's another big lie that they want to push on the Christians. So I want you to go over these verses again. Leave your comments down below and let me know if you have any other verses that you, you want to apply to this. And as always, I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. I think of you every day. I pray for you every day. I love you. And if you found this helpful, do hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, do hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.